Hey, what's up, YouTube? This is CJ. I'm going to give you guys a quick update on the reef tank. It's been roughly a week and a half, almost two weeks since my last full tank update. I figured it's time to catch you guys up. Now, as always, if you missed my last vid, I did cover some issues with the max spec gyre. I did get it sorted out, luckily, but definitely check it out if you haven't seen it. And as far as this update, we're going to cover how I remove nitrates in my tank, a few new additions I've had as far as coral and fish, and what happened when I added a new shrimp to the tank, considering I had those three murderers swimming around and, you know, all the drama I had before. So, hope you guys enjoy this one. So, roughly a couple of months ago, I shared with you guys I was going to start using the Cellcon Food Enhancer, or the nutritional uh, supplement. I don't know what you want to call it, but, you know, you're supposed to add it to your fish food, let it soak in, and then add it to your tank. So, that's pretty much what I've been doing, but of course, I like using something before, you know, I tell you guys the results. I just want to share with you guys, it, you know, there's no doubt about it. This is great stuff. Fish are going absolutely nuts. Haven't seen any issues as far as fish showing, you know, signs of egg or any sickness or any negative effects. I will say adding this to the tank does cloud the water, you know, for a few hours until it clears up. And I have also noticed a slight increase in my nitrates when using this. But overall, you know, the trade offs pretty good. So definitely gets my thumbs up and my approval. If you guys had any doubts about it, definitely go check it out. So in the last update, you know, I did share with you guys how my master plan completely failed. You know, I wanted to find out how much alkalinity and calcium my tank was using without doing water changes. Well, all that accomplished was letting my nitrates jump all the way up to 20 to 30 parts per million, way above where I like to keep it. Now, my corals were definitely hurting. You know, nothing was opening up. I had the brown jelly outbreak, and it, just, it was just all bad. So let me go ahead and share with you guys how I ended up fixing it and a simple solution that I think anyone can do to lower nitrates in their tank. Now, first, I do have to mention this. I'm not an expert in the hobby. Let me go ahead and give you guys that disclaimer. And I'm just sharing my experience with, you know, what worked for me. Now, keep in mind, you know, this tank is set up to be a minimal escape. You know, I got maybe 20, 25 pounds of rock. And my main biological filtration or the surface area I provide is in my sump or refugium. And that's my pine matrix. Have both chambers completely filled with pine matrix. That's the really porous, you know, rock looking material that allows all the denitrifying bacteria to grow and take their time to mature and keep my nitrates in check. So I just wanna throw that out there first before I share my thoughts with you guys. So with that being said, for the life of this tank, I've never used any dosing, carbon, vodka, you know, sugar, anything to get rid of it. No bio pellets, no, no pox, none of the things that they say are supposed to reduce your nitrates, I don't believe in it. You know, my thought process is this. If I keep this tank as natural as possible and let it build its own denitrifying bacteria up, it's gonna take care of itself. You know, without me making it rely on something that is not self-renewing, something I'm going to have to add to the tank over and over and over as it depletes, I just don't believe in it. So that's just my thought process on it. You know, I know a lot of people have success using those things, but if you don't have to use it, why use it? So with that being said, you know, nothing's perfect in this hobby. Everything has pros and cons. One of the biggest cons of doing things naturally without dosing is the amount of time it takes. In my experience from Using this pine matrix in multiple tanks over the last three and a half years takes anywhere between six and nine months before your tank establishes enough of that denitrifying bacteria to where you start seeing an impact or start seeing a reduction in nitrates. So with that being said, it also depends on stability in your tank. You can't keep making changes to your stock list, which I've done multiple times, but understanding the consequences of it lets me you know, figure out how to work around it. So at this point, you know, understanding my system and with it being a year old, it's mature to the point to where I can easily house five to six fish and only have to do a water change maybe every week, week and a half to keep my nitrates anywhere between zero and five parts per million. Now, keep in mind, that's with five or six fish. And that took a year to get to that point. So with all that being said, let's go ahead and get to the point. There's really two main reasons that my nitrates got out of hand in my system. First being... I've exceeded the bio load that this tank was mature enough to handle. By increasing my stock list, I have roughly 10 to 12 fish, and my overall plan is to end up with around 10 as my final stock count or the amount of fish I have in my system. 
Now, the second main reason that my nitrates got out of hand, very simple, I stopped doing water changes. That three week, around the three week mark is when things really got crazy. You know, considering how much fish I had in the system and how much food it took to, you know, keep those fish healthy, I was just adding and adding and adding and not exporting enough. So the solution for me was pretty simple in my situation, more water changes, but I couldn't just get back to a normal routine with my numbers being out of hand. I needed to reset everything back to zero or at least get my nitrates down to zero without dosing anything so I can find a new routine that's dictated by my nitrate level in my tank and how fast they rise. So in order for me to accomplish this in a timely manner, I needed to change pretty much all of my tank's water out for fresh water. So for me, the best way to do this was gradual. So I ended up doing a daily five gallon water change. And by my estimation, I swapped out 100 to 150% of my tank's water volume and effectively rebooted my whole tank with fresh water. Now keep in mind, I did have to consider my parameters, but with my tank already being elevated as far as my alkalinity, and all of my parameters pretty much matched the Reef Crystal's fresh batch out of the bucket, which was perfect for me. So currently, the tank is setting at nitrates anywhere between zero and five parts per million on my test kit, closer to zero from what I can tell. Mission accomplished, nothing shocked, and actually everything's responding, and I've seen great growth out of my monopore, so definitely a good sign. So, more of the story is, water changes is the way to go. And that's going to be my new plan, or my new master plan until something changes. So at this point, I would say it's safe to say I'm completely past the brown jelly and the water quality issues I had a few weeks ago, and I'm pretty damn happy because, you know, it was looking bad. I was afraid I was going to lose more coils, but everything left, it was responding fantastic. So it took a little bit of adjusting on the gyrus flow to, you know, dial it in, but the purple torch is loving it now, and even better, the gyrus flow pattern completely keeps all of the sweeper tentacles away from the left rock work and all the corals, so... No more concerns as far as it stinging anything, and I'm pretty happy about that because it allowed me to add some new pieces. So let me go ahead and take you in a little closer and show you what's new. I'm gonna give you guys a quick update on my new green finger leather I added a couple of weeks ago. You know, the last video I shared with you, it really wasn't attaching to the rock work, wasn't open as much, just wasn't happy. You know, things have changed. That little bit of super glue I had to hold it has held it long enough for the leather core to start growing over on its own and it's finally starting to set up right without falling over. I positioned it in a way to where it's pretty much gonna to grow to the exact same pattern as my old finger leather, which is pretty much all I wanted. I want the same effect, but just a little more color. That was the same, you know, that was the whole point of me moving that coral and trading it in. So definitely, uh, definitely a good sign and I'm looking forward to it. So it took me a little over a year, but I finally got my first A-can in my reef tank. Really wanted to keep one of these cores for a long time. I just didn't pull the trigger. Found this specimen, decent price, roughly 10 to 15 heads. Beautiful red color with blue stripes on it. I'm really gonna have to get you guys a better vid whenever it opens up. It's only been in the tank for a couple of days, still acclimating. I may have to move it, but so far it looks like it's digging the flow and I'll definitely keep you guys updated. So here we go. It's round two with anemones in the reef tank. Guy on Craigslist was selling these for $30 to $40 a piece. He had like 50 of them in his tank. And I just love that red color and I miss it in my system to be honest. The hope is the new flow pattern from the gyre flowing all through the tank will help keep this guy happy and keep him put. But I'll keep you guys updated on this situation. Now there is a bit of bad news in the tank. This guy's had a rough life, I'm not gonna lie to you. He's gotten stung by my torch coil, my frog spine, eaten by an emerald crab, an angel fish, and then when I put the anemone in the tank, as it's making its way to its final spot, it walked right past his tentacles and stung him. So my hope is he bounces back. This just happened yesterday. That's why it's pretty much, you know, this is a fresh wound. But I got a feeling he'll bounce back. But if not, you know, I'll keep rolling with him. I'm going to leave him where he is. It's one of my day one cores, and I'm just not going to get rid of it. So keep you guys updated. As always, hopefully this guy bounces back. Now, I do want to take a second and share my GSP with you guys. I don't talk about it every video, but I had to this time because I just noticed just how much it's grown. I mean, I started with just a quarter size, 
and now not only has it grown, but it's actually reached all the way out of the water to the backside of this rock and now starting to spread downward. So definitely has done everything I've wanted it to do. Not only that, it's starting to branch out and I'll actually try to show you guys some footage of it branching, you know, when it's not open. Pretty neat. Overall, I'm really happy. So uh, definitely a success story. Hopefully it doesn't come back to bite me, but so far so good. much gonna cover all the new additions as far as coils go as you can tell you know i have rearranged a few things partly because that space on the right that was empty that used to be my gold torches location was driving me crazy so that's the great thing about using super glue in a reef tank you know if you want to move something reach your hand in there pop it off re-glue it to the next place you know it's easy it doesn't leave much behind and if it does leave something behind you can just chisel it out and it usually breaks off in one piece so with that being said I moved my trumpet core from the left side of the tank to the right side. Now, really that's not going to be its permanent location. I just wanted something to fill that spot in. I'm still looking for some kind of bright euphilia, more likely a uh, hammer or frog spine, but I need something a neon color because that gold torch on that side of the tank really was kind of dull and really just wasn't, wasn't as bright as I wanted it to be. So uh, that's the plan for that area and then the area beside the anemone. I'm still wanting, you know, to put something there. I just don't know yet, you know, with the flow pattern changing and giving these more options, you know, I'm trying to stay away from SPS because I just haven't had much luck. You know, I got my style of pour that's been in here the whole time. It's been, you know, it's been alive, but every other SPS core I've had has not really, you know, done its thing like I want it. So not sure what I'm going to do with that part yet. Now, as far as stock list changes go, only thing I've added is going to be three new chromas. I had a group of four to begin with, and of course they chased around the other two that were weaker and killed them off. My hope is, you know, after all the aggression and the natural attrition that happens with Chromas, I end up with at least three or four. That's the plan. Right now I have five. <laughs> we'll see how long five lasts in the tank. Now it has been a few weeks since my tank has had any shrimp in it. I mentioned this in the update a while ago that, you know, my Rasses and my Flamehawk, one or the other or both pretty much took out all the shrimp in my tank. So I was a little apprehensive, you know, because they're not cheap. So I did go ahead. I traded in my two cocoa worms that I had in my system. And that was just enough to get a go ahead and get another uh, cleaner shrimp. So he's still in the tank. You know, luckily he's been in here for the last few days. Haven't noticed any fish go after him. And I'm doing my best to make sure I keep him fed and happy. So, you know, there's still the verdict's still open on this. If he makes it another week and a half or so, I may add another shrimp. But for now, he's the tester. And so far, so good. So it's pretty much going to catch you guys up on all the coral changes, stockless changes, and, you know, adding the shrimp. So nothing really more to cover. Now, as far as future plans, I'm still going to say the reef's still going through a transition. You know, I'm heading towards brighter days. And by brighter days, I'm talking about brighter corals. I'm really wanting some more eye-catching corals in the tank. You know, it may be a little more neon green and maybe some more red. Who knows? Maybe some orange. I'm looking for those brighter colors. So, and as far as my water change routine, Still don't know yet, you know, I finally got to the point to where everything is leveled out again, and I'm gonna just pretty much let my nitrates dictate my water change schedule. If I can make it four to six days, you know, that's ideal, at least once a week. If not, you know, I'm gonna do as much as I have to to keep my tank happy, you know, happy and healthy, and not let it decline to the point to where any disease or, you know, stress corals or any, any problems, you know, show their ugly head again, so. Other than that, I'm going to cut this video here. I've been rambling on too long. Hope you guys enjoyed it. As always, hey, like, comment, subscribe. You guys do what y'all do. Y'all be easy.